10 of us showed up on a gray Saturday morning in 2004 for the Learning Annexes, the Art of Exotic Dancing for Everyday Women class. It was being held in the Patty Wells Dance Studio on Morena Boulevard in a large, bright room with polished wood floors, lots of windows, and an entire wall of mirrors. Nearly all the women, but me, were sitting in small groups, chatting and giggling in anticipation of all the exotic dance moves we'd been promised in the Learning Annex class description. They were genuinely happy and excited to be here. The class was something they had chosen to do on a Saturday morning. Honestly, from the look of them, there was no place on earth they would rather be. As for me, I really would rather have been just about anywhere. This was not something I had chosen to do, but rather it was something that had been chosen for me by an editor at a magazine who had recruited a bunch of writers to take learning annex classes because what are they anyway? <laughs> you would see their colorful ads on the sides of receptacles for newspapers offering classes that ranged from 17 businesses you can start for under $1,000 to chutzpah 101. Wouldn't it be so funny, this editor thought, if I assigned a bunch of writers to enroll in the most absurd learning annex classes I can find and then have each of them write about it? And all of these writers will also be freelancers who need the work? <laughs> who is going to turn that down? No one. That's who. And that is how I came to be at the Patty Wells Dance Studio on a Saturday morning. My husband at home slightly peeved at me for taking this assignment. He was a lawyer who worked pretty much all the time and liked to sleep in on Saturday mornings. Today he had to get up with our two small children who were likely wreaking havoc at that very moment with Legos about to eat something non-nutritious for breakfast. So I could come here and learn how to dance really, really sexy, or maybe even exotically. It wasn't that I didn't want to learn how to dance like a stripper, although I didn't. It was more <laughs> that I had so little free time in my life. And here was a three hour window with no kids, no husband, no one I needed to drive anywhere and there were a thousand things I would rather have been doing than sitting on the floor of the Patty Wells Dance Studio learning the art of exotic dancing. Also, I feared this would be one of the most humiliating experiences of my life. Alone, pole dancing or whatever it was we would soon learn in front of a bunch of people I didn't know, and let's face it, I would probably be awful at it. I am not a sexy dancer. At that point in my life, I didn't do anything sexy at all. <laughs> I worked, I mommied, I did a lot of laundry, and I wore cotton underwear from Target. <laughs> I missed the introduction of the thong entirely. The women in the room somehow formed a circle on the floor, shyly staring at each other. What other kinds of women need to learn how to dance exotically? As we waited for the instructor, instructor billed as a real exotic dancer to teach, us her, to teach us her secrets. As if on cue, in prance dancer and former stripper, Coralisa Jeans, beautiful, vaguely Asian, and oozing sexuality. <laughs> the kind of woman who looks like she gets paid for showing up. She didn't waste any time either. Jean started by telling us that this class was about more than being sexy. It was about loving ourselves. Being sexy is however you interpretate that, she said, emphasizing her invented word. <laughs> Then she did a, demonstra a demonstration dance for us, arching her back and rolling her hips, 
and sliding down a mirror, all in seven-inch red stilettos. I felt flushed with embarrassment. One of my classmates mumbled something about not being able to move like that. But this wasn't the place for self-doubt. It was the place for exhibitionism. Because our first exercise was to stand in front of the mirrored wall and learn how to drag walk, which is not really walking at all, but more like swaggering as if you're a drunk sailor while also doing yoga. <laughs> Jeans had us perform accentuated arm movements and do standing hip rolls, squatting hip rolls, kneeling hip rolls. I couldn't bear to catch a glimpse of a lot of us in the mirror. We looked like a bunch of women writhing in pain. <laughs> I briefly considered sneaking out, popping a few Advil, and looking for an open bar so I could do a few shots and loosen up. But things were moving along too fast. We were already on to drawing the body, an artsy term for mauling oneself. The idea, theoretically, is to kind of outline your body with your hands in a way that makes you seem enticing and delicious. <laughs> One woman, her arms on her stomach, her eyes closed and head thrown back, looked like she might honestly be having an orgasm. <laughs> Another, an older woman taking the class with her daughter, savagely raked her hands across her breasts and along her inner thighs. I figured, if the grandmother could do it, I could do it, right? So I did it. I began outlining my torso, even trying the old thumbs in the waistband bit. But then I saw my reflection in the mirror. My hips thrust forward, thumbs pulling at my jeans, and my face. Good Lord, what the hell was I doing with my face? Why was my tongue sticking out? <laughs> Most of the other women were either laughing at themselves or, like me, were mortified. And I suddenly felt an overwhelming sense of camaraderie with them. We were, after all, in this ridiculousness together. After that, Jeans had us practice eye contact. The secret to sexy, we learned, is, should I give this away? Eye contact. <laughs> we were told to lock eyes with ourselves in the mirror without being critical of our appearance. Jeans guided us through exotic dancing affirmations as we whispered, I love myself, I accept myself, I am beautiful. Then we stood staring at ourselves in the mirror and she asked, Ladies, what do you see? And I thought, God, I really do look like my mother. <laughs> Graduation came in the form of high heels and feather boas, worn for the spectacular finale, something out of an Oprah empowerment nightmare. We reached into the costume box, the kind you find at children's birthday parties, filled with colorful boas, sequined caps, a vast array of high-heeled pumps, a few pink tutus, leather belts. And from that, we chose at least two things to wear. I chose a fat, feathery, neon pink boa and pink stilettos, a size and a half too big. And then we lined up and one after another, Eyes narrowed, mouths slightly ajar. We sauntered slowly down the room toward the mirror, making as much eye contact with ourselves as possible. Hands on our bodies, hips moving in circles, hair flying in all directions, trying to be our sexy best. Afterward, we sat back in our original circle and debriefed. What had we learned from this experience? Had we, perhaps, been changed by it? Were we more alive and at home in our bodies? As mostly middle-aged women who felt invisible in a society obsessed with youth, would we walk down the street with our newfound sexy confidence and be impossible to ignore? Who knows? What I did know was that I had met some nice women and realized I wasn't the only one in the world who didn't feel particularly confident about my body 
or about expressing my sexuality. Our reasons may have differed, but our insecurities and hang-ups felt eerily similar. Mine likely came from having a mother that viewed sex as an obligation and was modest to the point of puritanical. I was 14 before I learned exactly how a sperm reaches an egg to create a baby. I asked my older sister at the time, a sage 16-year-old, if perhaps our father had just given some sperm to our mother to send off to her eggs. My sister said, uh, no, that's not how it happens. You should go ask mom, she suggested. So I did. And my mom angrily pulled me into, the, into her bedroom to explain how things worked. It's called the gift of love, she said with obvious disgust. The man puts his penis into the woman's vagina and ejaculates, and then it fertilizes the egg. Now, don't ever ask me again. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> and that is probably one of the many reasons why I have never been particularly confident strutting my stuff. Which is to say that even if I hadn't wanted to be there in the Patty Wells dance studio that morning, I left feeling, if not empowered, like I might be able to get my husband to look up from his Blackberry when he spoke to me. I would try for years, actually, but not even a drag walk could make that man lift his head up from the phone. <laughs> As the class wound down to its last few minutes, each of us shared what we had learned. Nothing terribly profound, although many of the women admitted they saw themselves in a way they hadn't before and had a new openness to wearing stilettos. Jean seemed very touched, in fact, surprised that anyone could learn anything from her. <laughs> and I had been right about the woman having the orgasm dur during our drawing the body exercise. I was so into it, I turned myself on, the woman gasped. Jean's got so excited, spontaneous orgasms being a sign of a job well done in her line of work that she jumped up and clapped her hands. That's what being sexy is all about, she gushed. Jeans then looked at each of us individually for a moment and beamed with pride and joy. You ladies, she said, a bit choked up, spreading her arms wide as if to give us all one big hug. You ladies are awesome. Although back then, I dismissed Jeans and that entire class as being mostly nonsense just fodder for a short piece in a city magazine. It was one of the only times I had ever looked myself in the eye and said, I love you. That kind of affirmational self-love was never my thing. It would take me decades, in fact, to realize just how important it is to love oneself, especially as a woman, because we can be so brutal to ourselves when it comes to our appearance and perceived desirability. And Jean's never suggested we be sexy and confident for others. Not once did she mention being attractive to men. Her lessons were about us and only us, the 10 women in the room. And her class gave me tools I didn't know I needed to fake a certain kind of sexual confidence I wish I had, but I don't. Perhaps because of that, I am surprised at how often I have thought of that class over the years. I thought of it when I had to walk across a stage to speak and into the middle of a crowded bar. I thought of it when I had to go to parties and events where I didn't know anyone. In fact, I still do. When I'm anxious in social situations, I will actually lock eyes with a stranger <laughs> across a room and consciously slow down my walk, sway my hips gently, drop my shoulders back and raise my head high. I'll even put a slight smile on my lips as if to say, you don't know this, but I'm doing an exotic dance. <laughs> and yes, every once in a while, I look at myself in the mirror, hands on my waist, eyes narrowed, hips rolling forward, hair flying backward, and say, I love myself, I accept myself, I am beautiful. That is BAMP producer, the intimidatingly sexual Eileen Zimmerman, all the way from New York. <laughs>